Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, soon to be 90 degree red flag wildfire warning day here in the great state of Texas as the planet nibblers are busy behind me on this beautiful day. That would be Saturday morning, uh, April 2nd. 2022 so uh, yesterday I kind of forgot I was supposed to be bringing you my ecological meltdown roundup rant and went off on some other tangent so <clears throat> dollar short in a day late we are going to do what we try to do every Friday uh, and that is head over to mongabay.com and see what is on the mind of uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at Monga Bay uh, with their weekly cavalcade of catastrophe unfolding on this planet while everyone, while the entire planet's attention is fixed on uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock. Uh, <laughs> anyway, while the entire planet is uh, centered on that, this is what is going on uh, outside of the Oscars. We're going to start in Sub-Saharan Africa, and the uh, I think that's where Benin is. Wow, where we find the line between conservation and counterinsurgency blurring. Yes, this is just the latest uh, chapter of uh, in Sub Saharan Africa, the latest uh, series of roadside bombings inside this national park, uh, killing four rangers and an anti poaching trainer. Uh, over the border in Burkina Faso, militants have targeted forestry and conservation officials, hoping to capitalize on local discontent over park restrictions and gain new recruits. Lord, uh, well, guys, I hope the uh, there's not been one bit of wind all day, and now uh, the wind is cranking up. Uh, we're gonna, even though it's Saturday, we're gonna skip over the hopium. You will not believe this: that an FSC, uh, you, you know, the Save the Planet uh, Eco Certification Certificates. FSC certified paper corporation has been linked to massive forest clearing in Indonesia's Papua, what most of us call New Guinea. Yes, a subsidiary of South Korean paper company, Moreem, has cleared natural forest a tenth the size of the city of Seoul in Indonesia's Papua region over the past six years. Yes. The report alleges that the cleared areas consisted of primary rainforest serving as habitat for threatened species and a source of livelihood for indigenous people. Yep, yep. Uh, the Planet Eaters have denied the allegations, but the Forest Stewardship Council is, uh, says it has begun assessing the case. Mm -hmm. One more time, anybody believing any one of these horseshit uh, ecological sustainability certifications. This is one of the bright green lies of the 21st century. 
This is corporate greenwashing uh, of the most outrageous, uh, giving clueless little morons uh, the, the delusion that they're saving the planet by, uh, I, I, I don't know, whether it be lumber, coffee, seafood, beef, whatever, it's crap. You know it damn well. Anyway, moving on. How about moving on to giving up? Yes, giving up. Amazon is, the Amazon rainforest is losing its resilience under human pressure. The Amazon rainforest is losing its ability to bounce back from repeated disturbances, according to a new study. Researchers found that three quarters of the Amazon has lost some of its resilience or ability to regain biomass after disturbance by humans. This loss of resilience is especially high in regions close to human activity with less rainfall. As the forest is slashed, burned, and degraded, it is left with less vegetation, hmm. which means less evapotranspiration, leading to less rain. And less rain leads to further drought, fires, tree death, and forest degradation, a feedback loop of destruction and loss of resilience. The lead author describes the findings as, quote, depressing, but also says that, quote, having an early warning of this gives us a chance to do something about it. And there you go. Ah, we have a chance to do something about a feedback loop of destruction. I'm not going to get in to what we need to do about it. All right. Uh, we're going to go from the Amazon rainforest to the Nigerian rainforest. I did not realize there was any rainforest left in Nigeria, and at this rate, there won't be as deforestation is on the rise as poverty soars in Nigeria. This is, uh, guys, if you do not understand the difference between planet nibbling and planet eating, okay, this is planet nibbling. This is the aphids taking out the garden instead of the white tail buck, okay? This is how you lose a garden to aphids. Akuri Ofoso Forest Reserve <clears throat> was established to help protect what is now one of the largest remaining tracts of rainforest left in Virginia, in, in Virginia, in, in Nigeria, and is home to many species. But fire and logging is rampant inside the reserve, with satellite data showing it lost 44% of its primary forest cover in the last two decades. <coughs> and data indicate deforestation may be increasing this year. Uh, sources say poverty is the driving force behind the deforestation of Akuri Afoso and other protected areas in Nigeria. Okay, let, let, let's reframe this. Uh, humans are the driving force. Okay, poverty is not the driving force. 
humans are the driving force. Poverty-stricken humans who should never have been born, okay? Do we understand who the driving force of the destruction of this forest reserve and every other forest reserve on this planet is humans. Poverty-stricken humans are planet nibblers. They're only trying to feed their families of seven people. What is it? So the population of Nigeria, I'm guessing, has, uh, has quadrupled at least over the last 50 years and is supposed to, what, double again uh, over the next few decades. According to the World Bank, four in 10 Nigerians, about 80 million people, uh, were living below the poverty line in 2019, and the corona panic has brought another five million Nigerians under the poverty line. Anyway, anybody who does not understand planet nibbling. All right. Let's go back to the Brazilian Amazon the best preserved part of Brazil's Amazon. Home to isolated tribes faces decimation. Decimation, this word, people don't understand what decimation means. Decimation means losing 10% of something. It has already been decimated. People don't understand the difference between decimation and obliteration. It's, it, it, it faced decimation 50 years ago. It faces total obliteration off the face of the planet. Now that we have had our vocabulary lesson for the day, an area of forest larger than England could be, meaning will be, cleared by 2050 in one of the so far best preserved parts of the Brazilian Amazon, a new report warns. It says that the main drivers of deforestation in the middle Purus region are illegal logging, neglect by government institutes, and the paving of the BR-319 highway. The region is home to two areas where isolated indigenous people were recently discovered. The road paving project revived by the Bozo Nero administration after being shelved in 1988, also threatens a surge in deforestation, giving land grabbers and loggers greater access to previously remote areas of the forest. From there, uh, talking about dead whales how dead, dead whales washing up on the beach are good for the planet. Well, all I can say is there's going to be a hell of a lot more dead whales washing up on the beach. So uh, everything, uh, depending on uh, rotting whale carcasses, is going to have a few good years before there are no more uh, dead whale carcasses washing up on the beach. But let's go from food insecurity for scavengers to food insecurity uh, in humans 
uh, talking about how biodiversity is a matter of food security and livelihoods and must be put in that context to drive the urgency and progress this moment. I anyway, yeah, I, I will say uh, biodiversity and food insecurity, you know, is Bill Gatey uh, talking about, and this is mainly this talking about Sub-Saharan Africa once the biodiversity of the stewpot after the you know after humans and and this will start in sub-saharan africa after humans have eaten every single one of our fellow earthlings as the biodiversity of the stewpot uh goes to zero what will the humans eat next. Okay, so much for biodiversity and food insecurity. Uh, now, I actually that I actually like this hopium, guys. This is the World Wildlife Fund that that, that I have the much maligned World Wildlife Fund uh, uh, has finally come up with a great idea to help protect manatees in, uh, in the Great Barrier Reef uh, in an effort to protect dugongs and other threatened species. World Wildlife Fund Australia bought a commercial gillnet fishing license for a swath of ocean in the Great Barrier Reef to establish a de facto marine sanctuary. So, you know, I guess like uh, with uh, oil drilling permits on our public lands that you buy permission, you know, to fish, in this case with gill nets, this big hunk of the ocean floor goes to the highest bidder so world wildlife fund just bid against these uh you, you know these these fishing groups was awarded the license to fish that area of the great barrier reef and is just not going to fish it uh now of course at the world wildlife fund tried that on our public lands, Joe Biden would force them to uh, to go fishing. You know that, that story about Joe Biden forcing uh, oil companies not drilling on their leases on our public lands are now being forced to drill. For oil on our public, even if they don't want to drill on our public land. It, it, but anyway, maybe the World Wildlife Fund, uh, you go. All right. Uh, here is the latest bird you have never heard of hitting the scrap heap the silvery pigeon. The silvery pigeon. Uh, you can kiss goodbye. Alright, let's go back to Indonesia. Uh, where Indonesia's coal gasification plans could be costly for budget and the environment. Indonesia has broken ground on a $2 billion coal gasification plant and plans to build 10 more. In supporting coal gasification, Indonesian officials claim the aim is, is to both bolster coal production even if export demand diminishes. Uh, a new analysis uh, concludes that coal gasification will require 
massive government subsidies uh, in a way guys I have to uh... all right so you know uh, Philip Fernside is the, the manga bay's man on the ground in the Amazon so uh, this is Philip Fernside's weekly rant going back to uh, the Brazilian Amazon to the Jamaxum River <clears throat> looking at dams on Brazil's Jamaxum River the advancing assault on the environment and indigenous peoples in the Tapajos Basin. Brazil's elected authorities have given the go-ahead for studies to prepare for building three new large Amazon dams that would flood indigenous lands and protected areas for biodiversity. The decision shows that Brazil's presi presidential administration is confident that the Congress will approve the bill submitted directly by Bozo Nero to open up indigenous lands to hydroelectric dams and probably also allow more dams to continue to be built without consulting impacted indigenous peoples. Yes, the decision also allows that Brazil's electrical authorities continue to ignore inconvenient information on climate change, the financial viability of Amazonian dams, and their many social and environmental impacts. Thank you, Philip Fernside. Uh, anyway, uh, this is uh, more on that coal gasification. So basically, this is an oversimplification. It's taking the coal and doing whatever they do to it which probably uh, requires uh, huge inputs of fossil energy to get natural gas out of coal. So you mine the coal, but instead of burning the coal directly, you probably heat it up and gas comes out of it, however this works. Indonesian bill turns coal derived fuels clean by ignoring the true scale of its emissions. A bill being considered by Indonesia's parliament defines fuels derived from coal as being quote new energy, new energy with minimal carbon emissions. Energy experts have slammed this dissonance pointing out that producing and burning gasified coal, for example, in fact, emits more emissions than simply burning the solid coal for the same amount of energy in the first place. The bill also calls for the adoption of costly and unproven technologies to help coal-fired power plants run cleaner, including carbon capture and storage. Uh, <clears throat> experts say the bill calls into question Indonesia's commitment at last year's climate summit to phase out coal from its energy mix. Just don't call it coal, call it gas. You phase out coal by calling it gas. 
It's like uh, even the mainstream media today was talking about how uh, Bozo Nero uh, is phasing out illegal deforestation in Brazil just by making it legal, as Philip Fernside is, is, has been talking about uh, for years. They're just simply changing it from illegal to make all deforestation legal and you have ended illegal deforestation. You haven't ended deforestation, you've just ended illegal deforestation. You know, this, 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 anybody who does not understand how we have uh, reached 1984 here in uh, 2022. Uh, okay. Here is more. I did not realize there was any rosewood left in the country of Madagascar. I cannot believe that there's one rosewood tree in. Uh, Anyway, uh, go to the Horn of Africa. As the Horn of Africa eats up, the risks of insecurity are rising. World leaders are increasingly concerned about the complex connections between climate and insecurity including the risk that climate disruption is a conflict multiplier. The threat is particularly acute in the Great Horn of Africa, where populations already grappling with food insecurity and armed conflict are experiencing some of the fastest warming conditions in the world. Quoting the report, quote, the fortunes, the fortunes, I love that, that choice of word, the fortunes and stability of this region of 365 million people now look to be at the mercy of weather-driven mayhem. Yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> you know, we, uh, um, <clears throat> all of this talk we've been doing about how land-based conservation <clears throat> needs to include human rights. Now we have mar marine conservation talks must include human rights. <clears throat> we, we have a news flash. Humans do not live in the ocean. Human rights uh, have nothing to do with the ocean. Okay? <clears throat> Can we all agree that humans do not live in the damn ocean? You know, this crap, this uh, putting humans uh, you, you, you know, you can really stretch uh, your mind and, and, and talking about putting humans uh, above every other one of our fellow earthlings sharing uh, the land with us, but now talking about uh, you, you can't protect uh, the oceans w w without considering human rights. Come on. There we go. Coalition Against Online Wildlife Trafficking shares little evidence of success. Yes, officials from the Coalition to End Wildlife Trafficking Online say progress is being made, but evidence to support that contention 
is minimal, a new analysis shows. Uh, gee, uh, who would have ever thought it? Let's go down to Peru. Oil spill contaminates wildlife, beaches, and protected areas in Peru. Yes, a refinery owned by Spanish oil company Respa spilled nearly 12,000 barrels of oil into the sea off the coast of Peru as it was pumping the oil from a tanker. Uh, Peru's Environmental Enforcement Agency has fined Respal for similar spills on at least three prior occasions. The spill has now spread beyond the Lima coast and out toward the islands that are part of a network of protected nature reserves, posing serious threats to marine life. Yes. Wow. But we're going to end up, since I understand I'm talking to myself, and my friend is saying uh, we need to get ready to head to a picking party. One more, we're going to end up on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia with this shocking report <clears throat> from 2022. The Great Barrier Reef is bleaching once again and over a larger area. <clears throat> the Great Barrier Reef is currently experiencing its sixth mass bleaching event and the fourth event of this kind to happen in just the past six years. Based on aerial surveys that were concluded this week, bleaching, you know, this newest bleaching, has affected all parts of the Great Barrier Reef with the most severe bleaching occurring between Cooktown, Queensland and the Whitsunday Islands. Sea surface temperatures around the Great Barrier Reef have been higher than normal despite the region going through a La Nina climate pattern which usually brings cooler weather. Climate change remains the biggest threat to the Great Barrier Reef and other reefs around the world, experts say. So there you go. From the Amazon rainforest to the Great Barrier Reef, you notice that the Arctic and Antarctica never mentioned anywhere this week in Manga Bay. You can only put so much doom and gloom into one newsletter. But anyway, uh, I need to wrap up this week's dollar short and day late ecological meltdown roundup rant. And the little dog and I are getting ready to go to a picking party in the great state of Texas for the first time in two years. I highly suggest you get out there and make music with your clueless, lovable, normie friends while you still can. Bye, guys.